think Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! My name is James O'Brien, and today I'd like you to talk to me about Jeremy Corbyn and Brexit. Specifically, what, what, what do you think the party will do? What do you think the party should do? And what would you like, personally, the party to do? It is, I think, fairly compelling evidence that the, um, let's be a little bit fairer than usual, perhaps, the, the, some of the claims from Corbyn and John McDonnell, Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell, is it's all about what the membership want. I think McDonnell said at one point, we don't believe in leaders. Leaders should go where the masses lead. That's absolutely terrifying. But it would appear that when it comes to the second referendum, they're not going to reflect the will and the view of the membership. And Dan Hodges, a political commentator of some perspicacity, suggests probably rightly that Remain supporting MPs will just have to suck it up. Obviously, I, I want a second referendum. I make no bones about that. I think ev everybody should um, want one because, uh, y you know, if people who claim it will be a, an even more resounding victory for the Leave side um, are to be believed, then good, frankly. I, I increasingly just wish it had been a bigger gap and that there'd been no cheating and law-breaking by the Leave campaigns and that we knew where all the money had come from that paid for it and we had properly scrutinised Cambridge Analytica, but we're not going to be talking about that side of it today. We're going to be talking about, I think, the, I think the utterly reliable, I think it's utterly reliable contention that the massive majority of Labour Party members and potential Labour voters would like a second referendum. And Jeremy Corbyn would not. I, I do find it hard to fully believe that, even though he voted pretty much against everything European Union flavoured from the moment he walked through the doors of Westminster right up until his... And, and look, you, you can send me a million tweets and texts saying that he campaigned tirelessly for Remain during the referendum campaign, but you'd be lying. And, and, and we both know that. It's just that only one of us can admit it, not you. So... What, what do you think is going to happen now? If, I, I particularly want to speak to people who are Corbyn loyalists. Notice I don't say cultists anymore, although there is definitely uh, a grouping around Jeremy Corbyn that does deserve to be described as cult. It's so difficult to distinguish between them. So if I say Jeremy Corbyn supporters are cultists, and you say, well, I quite like Jeremy Corbyn, but I don't think he's the Messiah, then I, I, I appreciate that you don't like the implication that you might be a cultist, you might be blind to facts and evidence and um, motivated solely by, by hope and faith. So I don't use the phrase anymore. I don't know why I bother policing my own vocabulary. Nobody else does. I bend over backwards to accommodate your complaints, you know. And do I get any thanks for it? Do I bilio? But anyway, I'm not calling you cultists today. I'm call I better stop saying that as well in case I have a, a Nicky Campbell moment. Um, I am going to call you loyalists, and some of the loyalists are blindly loyal, but not all of them. And if you are a Corbyn loyalist who doesn't want to leave the European Union, because regardless of what you felt in June of 2016, nobody's given you a good reason for doing it, except the fact that we voted for it. Have you noticed this? It's an astonishing circle. What, why, why do we have to do Brexit? now that we know so much more and now that so many things have turned out not to be true that we were told by Leave campaigners during the campaign uh, oh well because we voted for it why did we vote for it? because we want to do it why do you want to do it? because we voted for it why did you vote for it? because we want to do it and it just goes on and on and on and on and on and it, and it completely removes facts and evidence from the equation we have to do it, it's the will of the people all these people voted for it, we voted for what? for Brexit what does Brexit mean? Ah, well, it means very different things to many, many people. Well, how can they all have voted for the same thing then? So you end up with this astonishing assault upon the nation's intelligence, where people who frankly should know better, or people who are benefiting from the assault upon the nation's intelligence, pretend that 17.4 million people somehow voted for the same thing. Because once you really file it down and boil it down and distill it down to its very essence, you're voting, you're voting for a word. You're not voting for a policy. It's why one of the parties campaigning the best, I think, in the, ahead in the opinion polls in the European Union elections doesn't have any policies at the moment and isn't going to publish any. If you needed a most beautiful illustration of how fact-free the entire debate has inevitably become, you'd have to say, well, how, how can you have a party? How can you have a party without any policies? Doesn't matter. Don't need policies. Leave means leave. Okay. 
<sighs> and I thought Jeremy Corbyn, even I, as a... Sorry, I'm being a bit self-referential. Plus, I change. A Corbyn sceptic. I was open to persuasion, first six months or so of his leadership, that there was something other... There was something beneath the bonnet that was more impressive than the exterior of the car, and, and I've spent uh, the best part of the subsequent period wondering whether there's anything under the bonnet at all, to be honest with you. I, I thought... I, I just presumed that he'd reflect the views of the membership. I thought of all the things about him that you might not like, the one thing you have to give him credit for is genuinely letting the membership essentially get into to the driving seat of the car. And I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit, I, I don't know that I've got any evidence to even back that up anymore. You're very lucky in Ireland. You've got a vote in October as to whether or not to endorse the European treaties. All the struggle for freedom and independence from the British Empire was not about Ireland joining in imperial adventures in the future. I do not see how one can effectively marry the traditions of Irish neutrality with the signature for the Lisbon Treaty. And I think that's a message you've got to keep on and on putting over all the time. NATO then developed for itself this role as being the military arm of the European Union. Under the terms of the Lisbon Treaty, Europe will become subservient to the wishes of NATO and the aims of NATO. We are creating for ourselves here one massive great Frankenstein which will damage all of us in the long run. If you succeed in getting a no vote here, that will be such a boost to people like us all over Europe that do not want to live in a European empire of the 21st century. And does he not recognise the great danger to the cause of socialism in this country or any other country of the imposition of a banker's Europe? on the people of this, this continent. My concern is that we need to be very robust against the conditions for the single currency. The single currency will lead to enormous cuts in public expenditure in Britain and a very rapid rise in unemployment. Now, he appeared to make some tilt in that direction. The other one is a concern about democracy in Europe. We have a European bureaucracy totally unaccountable to anybody. Powers have gone from national parliaments, they haven't gone to the European Parliament, they've gone to the Commission and to some extent to the Council of Ministers. These are quite serious matters. I wondered if the Prime Minister has yet had a chance to place a call to Alexis Tsipras, the new Prime Minister of Greece, to congratulate him on winning the election, but also to learn from him why the people of Greece have finally said no to the imposition of the most appalling austerity, destruction of their public services, high levels of unemployment and deepening poverty. Will he use his good offices within the European Union to ensure they do get the debt right off they're so desperately seeking in order to restore Greece to the prosperity that it deserves to enjoy? The membership are supposed to be setting the agenda. The membership are supposed to have their feelings reflected at conference, in manifestos, wherever it may be. And, and the massive majority of the membership of the Labour Party in Britain is in favour of a second referendum. I'm not even saying they're in favour of remaining, but they are in favour of a second referendum. All right, they're also in favour of remaining. And ten minutes after ten is the time. I don't think they're going to get one. Because I don't think... Well, you tell me what you think. It's almost certainly more interesting than what I think. But it seems to me that his chances of getting into Downing Street would be damaged by a second referendum. That's your starter for 10. Discuss. 0345 606973. So the Conservative Party is about to tear itself to shreds. Uh, it, it, is, it is upon the brink of astonishing um, self-destruction. Uh, historically, the Conservative Party is one of the finest institutions on the planet for sticking together, for, for prioritising survival and unity above all else. The reason why they've been such a powerful electoral force for over a hundred years is because they generally don't succumb to infighting in the way that other parties do. So, you know, the, the Liberals failed. The Labour Party is still in danger of splintering. Um, uh, the, the Conservative Party, I think, probably would have splintered if they'd lost in 2015, but they didn't, so they hung in there, and then they had the referendum as an attempt to bring unity to the table and what happened well you, you you can see what happened so people think jeremy corbyn's labor party people voted for jeremy corbyn's labor party in the belief that it would eventually stick its colors to the remain mast today we will find out whether or not it's going to 
but I don't think it is. I think all of the mood music suggests that what Jeremy Corbyn wants is to get the withdrawal agreement through Parliament, watch the Conservatives tear themselves to shreds and then slip into Downing Street in the after the general election that will inevitably follow. It's a slightly overused phrase to say that one is feeling politically homeless. Just to put all my cards on the table, I, I know my local MP and I really like her, so I think I'll be OK voting for her, whoever is leading the party. But I will be voting Labour probably despite... This is in a forthcoming general election. I, I don't know what I'm going to do in any others. But despite Jeremy Corbyn, not because of Jeremy Corbyn, genuinely despite Jeremy. And I think that's probably the most underrepresented constituency in Britain today. People who would vote for Jeremy Corbyn in a general election, despite the fact that Jeremy Corbyn is leading the... Or vote Labour, despite the fact that Jeremy Corbyn is the leader. And if it becomes clear, as I genuinely think it will today that they're not going to back a second referendum. They're going to try and help Theresa May get this withdrawal agreement plus customs union through Parliament. And they might pull it off. I, I don't know what happens next. We, we'll have a watered-down version of European Union membership. We'll become in many ways precisely the country, to use that phrase, rule-taker, not rule-maker. We'll become precisely the country they lied to us about before the referendum, the country they told us we were, the rule-taker, not the rule-maker. We will not see any meaningful changes to our ability to trade. Well, this ludicrous line about striking up our own trade deals. Have you noticed how stupid that is? It only struck me at the weekend why that's such a stupid thing to say. You can't negotiate your own trade deals. You can only ever negotiate a trade deal with someone else. So by definition, it's not your own. We'd be, we'd be negotiating unilaterally with another market as a much, much, much weaker potential partner than the European Union. OK, I'll give you that. But the other side gets to write some rules as well. It's a, it's a toing and a froing. If you had to actually boil Brexit down to a single, the most damaging misconception of all. It's this notion that somehow other countries will dance to our tune. Whether it's the 27 members of the European Union who are supposed to roll over because, because they need us so much more than we need them, or whether it is this new sort of notion that other countries will dance to our tune. We'll get magnificent trade deals as a, as a market of 50 million, far superior to what we get as a member of a market of 500 million. It doesn't actually make any logical sense. It, it, it almost defies political gravity. And that's just one of the reasons why I, I, I wish Jeremy Corbyn would today come down or the NEC under his guidance would today commit to campaigning in the European elections for a second referendum. But I don't think they're going to. So let's work on the principle that they don't, and then you tell me how that makes you feel. Dan Hodges, the, the Mail on Sunday columnist, contends on Twitter this morning. And I like Dan Hodges as a commentator because I can't predict what he's going to say, generally. And that, that makes him a very rare beast on Fleet Street these days. Um, he, he says the Remain MPs will just fall into line. They'll be unhappy, they'll huff and puff a bit, but they'll have to go along with it. In the same way, in many ways, they've rolled over on the anti-Semitism scandal and, and haven't made it a point of principle. I would very cautiously suggest, just in the interest of hacking off everybody today, rather than just a specific constituency of my lis listenership, you could see some elements of the Labour Party's accommodation of the anti-Semitism and Jeremy Corbyn's weapons-grade incompetence, as, as similar to how the Republican Party in America is accommodating some of Trump's worst attributes and, and behaviours. Not, not, I mean, anything like the same scale, but I think a, a similar principle. It should really have resigned by... You know, there's a Labour member on social media last night calling for a... to march on a synagogue. I mean, this is the point at which you surely have to wonder what party you're a member... what sort of party you're a member of. Four years ago, Ed Miliband, a Jewish man, was leader. <laughs> it's incredible how fast these things fall, how quickly they crumble. But I've gone around the houses a bit today, so I should give you a question that you can actually answer before I cut to the, to the commercial break. And that, that question is this. The NEC today, I think, will fail to put a second referendum on the Labour's manifesto for the European elections. I, I think today is the day it becomes impossible to cling to the hope that Corbyn would ultimately and eventually come down on the side of the membership and insist upon a second referendum before anything else happens with regard to Brexit. I think that's going to happen today. How does that make you feel? And is the commentator Dan Hodges right when he says, and I'm going to include Remain 
supporters uh, in the constituency of Remain MPs that you will just huff and puff a bit but go along with it because the choice between a Labour government and a government led by Boris Johnson or the ERG, regardless of what happens with regard to Brexit, the Labour Party can still rely on your vote. And that, to me, suggests that democracy in a way is broken. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Everyone's going to cast a vote, either based upon prejudice and, and bigotry, or upon reluctance. I, I'll, I'll support them because I always have. Or in in the case of Labour voters and Jeremy Corbyn, you'll be voting for the least bad option, while wondering why nobody stood up and and defended your position on a second referendum. Hit the numbers now. You will get through. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Where we are wondering, I suppose, how how we're going to react. How Labour supporters and particularly Jeremy Corbyn loyalists who would much rather remain in the European Union and or have a second referendum on that issue. How are you going to process the fact that he's not going to stick it? He's not going to campaign on that in the Euro elections. It seems fairly certain, although when I take a risk like this at 10 o'clock in the morning, well, it seems to increase the possibility of the wind blowing in precisely the opposite direction by lunchtime. We'll find out. Michael's in Derby. Michael, what would you like to say? Hope you're well. Very well, Michael. Um, What's on your mind? Yeah, I'm really confused. I'm a Labour Party member, and I've been a while. Voted Labour all my life. Yeah. Um, I'm your typical Labour voter. My father worked down pit all them years ago, and my mum was a factory girl, so... I'd like to think I'm, you know, pretty standard Labour type voter, uh, historically. Yes. But I'm really confused with Corbyn. Um, I really struggle to get what he's about. Um, I love the, I love a lot of the Labour bar- Party policies. Yes. But what I really struggle with is him as a person. Really? This isn't really the, the sort of direction I was expecting the traffic to go in, but I am fascinated in what you're saying. Why, why is that? And, and we'll move on to the brexit stuff, but I'm fascinated to know what you mean when you say that, because because his supporters, most of whom come from... I, I was born in Derby as well, actually, but I think from what you've said about, about mining and, and factory workers, our backgrounds are obviously quite different um, for our generation, and people like me think that Jeremy Corbyn speaks for people like you. Do you see what I mean? He's supposed to be the bloke who's bringing Labour back to the working class after Tony Blair essentially made it attractive to the middle class. I think that's absolute hogwash, but that's the narrative that's out there, and you clearly think it's hogwash as well. Yeah, I think personally, I I do struggle with the fact that I don't think he comes from a particularly working class background. I know that shouldn't hold anything against him, but I think a lot of what confuses me is yeah. that, you know, they talk about members wanting to have the final say and using that as a as part of the Labour movement, but there's a large majority of Labour members that would want a second referendum. It's about 75% according to the polling, um, and... And uh, I'm incorrigible reminds me uh, that in 2016, this is a direct quote, what I want is more power for members, more power for supporters in order to ensure we do have policies that do have support throughout the whole party. And that's what you mean by it, it becoming almost a personal issue now. That's an issue of trust and integrity, right? Did he mean it when he said it? Because it persuaded a lot of people that he was different, that he was the future. And now well, on the biggest issue the country's going to face in, in, in generations, he's doing the opposite of what he promised to do. But I think when you, you know, I talk to friends who are very similar background to me, working class people that may have voted Labour in the past, they struggle with Corbyn. They struggle with him as a person. Right. I actually think that that we would do better as a party, and I know I've probably got thousands of Corbynites absolutely screaming at me at this moment. But but what it's about is winning the next general election. And I'm afraid to say there's too many people in this country who who aren't really swayed either way that will vote against Corbyn. But when you read what Labour's plans are and what they want to do, whether it be the NHS, it ticks all the boxes. But unfortunately, you know, you look at America with Trump, it's getting more and more towards personalities 
rather than uh, policies. Except on Brexit, though, and that's what I thought we were going to be talking about, although I've, I've really enjoyed listening to, to what you've said. Yeah, um, I mean, where, do, where, where are we on Brexit? Because y do you want the NEC today to put a second referendum on the manifesto? That's what they should campaign for in the, in the yeah, coming I mean, elections. Yeah. You I do, because 75% of, of the membership want it. But I, I'm, I'll, I'll put me, you know, sure. I'll be honest, I voted Remain. Yes. But I voted Remain, and, and, you know, because I didn't really know at the time enough information. No. So I think I would rather be in the tent, you know what. <laughs> better uh, safe than, than sorry. Let's go for better then. safe than sorry. We don't need to bring um, urinating into the analysis. No, I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but yes, I mean, it's... Um, I, I think better the devil you know. I think we're at a real crucial point, Labour are, and I think that um, they could go either way. Well, if, um, you, if you got, you've got 48% of the country if you go back to 2016, 58% of the country if you go to the nearest opinion poll, 75% of the country if you confine it to the Labour Party membership, none of whom are going to be represented potentially by either of the two major parties in the coming Euro elections. And that's quite incredible, Michael. That doesn't, I mean, I, I say the words out loud, I can't quite believe what I'm saying. Yeah, we have a general election every four years because... Yeah. We basically judge them on them four years, and if they've not delivered what they've said, then we need to go again. And I actually think, you know, this is what we need to do. Uh, and yet no one, I, I, and I know there are other parties, of course there are, and, and some of them are specifically dedicated to that second referendum, but as, as, as you speak, as you describe yourself as, as Labour died in, in the wool, cradle to the grave Labour, Labour voter, um, f from a mining community in, in, in Derbyshire, and... That is fascinating to me. That's why I mentioned our backgrounds. I, 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 just to, to say completely different backgrounds, but arri arriving at a very, very similar place. And I'm old Labour, oddly, in, in my bones, in my, in my heart, in my roots, in, in Sheffield and Leeds. But no one speaks for me. No one speaks for Michael on this specific issue at this amazing point in British history. And that's, that's incredible. Or maybe no one loud speaks for us. I don't know. Michael, mind how you go. Nancy's in Lambeth. Nancy, what would you like to say? Hiya, James. Hello, um, I just wanted to say that I'm, I'd be really disappointed. I'd like to be listened to. I'd like to be heard by Labour. We've been trying to, to get a balanced view and it's just not coming. So, And I'm frustrated because I, I'm keen to vote Labour. Yes. But I don't think I'm being heard. I don't think that there's been an enough respect and balance. Um, can I say one other thing, James? Uh, you can say 17 other things <laughs> if you want, Nancy. It's only the news that's going to stop you. <laughs> well, you said that I'll end up voting for Labour despite Corbyn. Not in the Euros, um, uh, just in general elections. In, no, yes. For me, that's the point. Yes. He's not worried about your motivation. He's worried that he gets your vote. Yeah. So you, he can say anything he likes about, because despite what he does in the Euros, he's got your vote. So, for me, and then you say that means democracy... Because of what Dan Hodges said about if it comes down... Whatever happens in the Euros, it comes down to a choice of the next general election between Jeremy Corbyn's Labour and Boris Johnson or, or, or Jeremy Hunt or Dominic Raab's Conservatives, he can rely on the votes of people like you and me. Yes, and therefore, then you, you just... You, you go thinking, well, why does he have then, given that have any motivation to say anything different on a second referendum. And that's why Mr Hodges is right on the money today when he says, I don't know if the anti-Semitism parallel is entirely fair, but the description of Remain MPs preparing to huff and puff and then just go along with it meekly seems to be quite close to the money to you and to me. Well, because they, they, they know what... You can make all the noise, but at the end of the day, they'll get your vote. Mm. And, and um, don't forget, we're talk, you know, it's supposed to be... It's not just on this issue. It's increasingly clear that the, the entire decision-making process is being driven by unelected officials in private. Um, you know, whether it's Seamus Milne, the strategy director who rewrote the letter that Keir Starmer had, had drafted, setting out Corbyn's conditions for supporting a deal, or, or whether it's removing all references um, to a second referenda. It, it, it's not the members that are driving this. It's, it's, and therefore, there is something quite ugly going on here, which is... I think, as Nancy describes it, taking support for granted on a general election from people who really, really wish that Labour would reflect the wishes on, of the membership when campaigning in the coming Euro election. So I need a Corbyn loyalist. 0345 973 is the number you need. And I, I often ask this, because I think that line of Trump's about being able to shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and not lose a single vote has been proven to be true. 
but what about Corbyn? And if he drops this, would that knock the gloss off him or would he still be the absolute boy? Um, lines 9 and 10 are currently free and I'm holding out for a hero. Now, I'm holding out, if I may, for a, 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 a an agent of change. If, if the Labour Party today doesn't back a confirmatory referendum, what do you, as a dyed-in-the-wool Corbyn loyalist, what do you do? How do you feel? Uh, I'm just really interested to know. I'm not in the mood for a ding-dong particularly because it, we haven't really set the conversation up in that way. But you have to, you have to understand what I'm asking. I, I, I'm not asking for people who've got fairly ambivalent views about the European Union membership. I'm asking for people who, who like the massive majority of the Labour Party membership, profoundly desire another vote and are not going to get it from their man. How are you going to process those two facts? That's what I want to know. Uh, and which side are you going to come down on? Because I think that Dan Hodges is right when he suggests that it is, in fact, going to see a lot of Remain supporting MPs um, huff and puff for a bit and then suck it up and move on to a general election where the choice will be between Jeremy Corbyn's Labour and probably Boris Johnson's Conservative Party, possibly Boris Johnson's Conservative Party, more likely perhaps Jeremy Hunt's, but he's today said no deal in preference to no Brexit, which is an astonishingly... Um, difficult position to defend presumably no one will ask him to defend it properly and and then Corbyn can rely on your vote even though you'll be furious about the EU I think that's what he's banking on but I want to know what you think Roger is in Clapham Roger what would you like to say uh, yeah well I just think they that Labour should do whatever they think uh, gives them the best chance of winning the next election well Therefore, I don't know how I don't know how this is where I get confused, is that I would have thought that coming out now for a confirmatory referendum would see them romp home in, in, in all of the ballots that are on the horizon. Well, yeah, but there's the question of the, um, the, the constituencies they need to gain, which are all apparently um, leave no, constituencies. But, but, but they're not. That's simply not true. I mean, there's, there's, there's a balance well, to be struck. All, no, well, definitely majority. not all. Well, not even the majority. There's more of a danger. The argument is usually that they'll lose constituencies that they currently hold because those constituencies voted leave in 2016. It's not, it's not the argument that they wouldn't gain constituencies that voted leave. But you would... So you, your attitude to the European Union, which is going to be an epochal change to British society, it's going to affect generations to come, you would put that in second place of priorities on getting Corbyn into Downing Street. Yeah, I mean, okay. you know, I'm not absolutely... Corbyn is not the thing. It's Labour policies for me. But, but, yeah, but the Labour policies are supposed to reflect the wishes of the membership, mate. Yeah. And yep, on the biggest issue, you, on I the biggest issue so of our age, it doesn't. A, a, there is a, a Brexit derangement thing, which has elevated Brexit into just this massive thing, which mm, yeah, overrules okay. well, all else. Yeah, all right. It's, it's interesting, well, that. I, I mean, you can call it deranged, or you could call it reality. It's, a, it's your choice. I mean, either it is the biggest issue facing our country for generations, or it isn't. Um, and if you think it isn't, forgive me, Roger, then you're a bit silly. Caroline's in Birmingham. Caroline, what would you like to say? Well, I am a Labour Party member, and I think Corbyn is absolutely fantastic because all I am witnessing is poverty and deprivation. The IMF have spoke about it, saying that the way the people are being treated in this country is shocking because mm. of the poverty, the deprivation. When you've got poverty and deprivation, we've got homelessness, we've got food banks that are supposed to be increasing. But by, by almost all accounts, yes. Brexit's going to make all of yeah. that worse. I, I believe it will. I, I, and I do so why isn't Corbyn that. trying to stop it? Uh, well, there might be a, a things we don't know about. Oh, we, we can't, we can't have a phone in where, where you're, you're yeah. sounding like a Brexiter. You've got a plan, you just can't tell no. me what it is yet. Well, basically, <laughs> I think uh, it's, it's, it's that bad at the moment. Can it get much worse? Because we're the most yes. richest country on the planet, and we've got people in bags, food banks, kids going to school. It's on the news that kids are going to school with shoes they can't fit, and the uniforms are starving. But no, no one's, I'm not arguing with you about any of that. Yeah, I'm just know, saying it will get worse. If we leave, so why we won't don't he put... Know that for sure. we, nobody knows, as the kids and we don't really know what's going to happen. I think it will get worse, to be honest with you. But at least we can hold Corbyn or whoever's into account by voting and saying we're not happy. Because at the moment, we don't know where the money's going half the time. Well, well, nor do we know where it's going in. to come from, Caroline, in, in, under Jeremy yeah. Corbyn's plans. But I don't want to get bogged down in, in, in budgets and, and sums. I yeah. want to know well, how you feel as someone who's very pro-Jeremy Corbyn. How yeah. will you feel if later today... He 
well, what's the best word to say? He he rejects the last chance for the Labour Party to to to, to stop I Brexit. I him, and I'll go with him because he's in the know. He knows. But that's faith, on. isn't it? You're too, I trust him. Yeah, I have got faith in him. Yeah. I do because everything he says. Despite all the facts, job. seventy. Here's the line, right? John McDonnell. We don't believe in leaders. We believe that leaders should be following the masses. The entire See, point. That's what I think he does do. I think he listens. Well, to the seventy-five percent of yeah. the membership wants yeah. another referendum. Yeah. Well, I will go with his decision because I trust him. He's for the many, not but the few. But he said yes. for the many, yes. not the few. What is 75%? The many or the few? Well, as a, I don't know. but I Well, do let's think. work it out, shall we? Because percent yeah. means out of 100. So 75 out yeah. of 100, that means you've got 75 on one end of the jigsaw, one end yeah. of the seesaw, and 25 on the other. Which is the many yeah. and which is the few in a 75 25 split, Caroline? I'm on about the bigger picture. So we am I. What, what, so am I. What's bigger, 75 or 25? What's bigger, country. Caroline? Yeah. What's bigger, yeah. 75 or 25? Well, what's all, why have we got uh, people living in poverty and we've got a royal family? What's that all about? Oh, it's about. It's about, it's about and 40. We're Are we just saying complete non sequiturs that bear no resemblance to what yeah, each other has said before? But For the many, not the few. For. What's the many? 75 yes. or 25? Well, I'll just go with his decision. He knows what he So he's not for the many, then. He's for the few. He's for... I'm on about the pitch people in this country. So am I. Uh, but I'm speaking specifically about the Labour Party membership who are supposed to be setting the Labour Party policy. Uh, we're not going to fall out, Caroline, but you've come as close as anyone can come to saying, I will trust him despite all the evidence to the contrary that I shouldn't. We will let the membership set the agenda. We will let the membership write our policies. We don't believe in leaders. We believe that leaders should be following the masses. We are for the many, not the few. All right, it's 75% of your membership. Oh, yeah, not that, not that many. The, the other many. I didn't mean, a bigger picture, many. Mick's in Lambeth. Mick, what's going on? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to start by referendum, because it's getting missed out. Um, is I don't really want another referendum, but if there is one, I think there should be two questions, and one should be to leave without anything, just leave, and the other one should be... I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to sound impatient, but can we can we deal with the questions I'm asking? Do you mind? Yeah, because I'm, I'm saying the other question, one should be, we should stay no, okay. in Okay, I, 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 I thought I'm fairly clear, how will you feel if the Labour Party fails to back a confirmatory referendum despite promising that they would do the wishes of the membership rather than the wishes of the leadership, Mick? Well, I think we're all let down by our politicians because none of them can make a decision. Right. That is OK, thank you. Neil's in Cumbran in South Wales. Neil, what would you like to say? Um, I, I'd just like to say I think, uh, I think Corbyn should definitely support the second referendum. Well, he's, I don't think um, he's going to. So how will you, as a Labour member and a fan of Corbyn, uh, it says here, how will yeah. you feel if he doesn't? I will vote elsewhere. W uh, will you really? You will elect. Yes, definitely, yes. Because that's, yes. that's, the, that's the gamble that they seem to be taking, and that's the really interesting... You are the caller I've been waiting for, because the, the gamble is that despite you wanting a second referendum, even if he doesn't deliver it, you, like Caroline in Birmingham, will feel your loyalty or your uh, objection to the alternatives kick in, and maybe in the Euros you'll vote one way differently, but come a general election and the choice between Corbyn's Labour or Boris Johnson's Conservatives, he can bank on your vote even if he drags us out of the European Union, right? No, no, he couldn't bank on it, but unfortunately this is where the irony uh, that the Euro elections will actually provide a far more democratic voting system with a regional form of proportionate representation. Sort of, where but, but you've got, don't forget, you've got, you, you, you've got some parties that don't actually have any policies campaigning in there, which kind of throws everything into disarray. In an ideal universe, you'd be right, proportional representation of people's votes for specific policies, complicated, detailed, but we're not going to get that. Uh, well, no, I mean, uh, obviously I've only done li limited research at the moment and I believe we're still waiting for the manifestos to be to be released. For and the, and the Labour but manifesto is unlikely to contain support for a confirmatory referendum, which would be goodbye to your vote. But then when, oh, a, general election, yeah. when a general election comes round, he thinks he could probably rely on getting it back again. Uh, well, first of all, I've written to Jeremy Corbyn and Tom Watson to say basically just what I've said, that there's a Labour Party member I will be voting elsewhere, should they not back a second referendum. Um, but come the general election, this is the irony again. I, I would yeah. be in a dilemma, but basically exactly. I would vote elsewhere as it stands at the moment. 
But the problem is, is because of our antiquated first-past-the-post system, I live in a Labour safe seat, so my vote wouldn't really count. I can make far more of a protest in the Euro elections because of the much fairer voting system. Uh, I, uh, I, again, I would say, I hope you're right, but in, and then in an ideal world you would be, but you've got, you've got um, as ever, you've got people campaigning in the Euro elections who are not really interested in the, the business of governing the business of, of representing in Brussels the voters in Britain. Um, Twas ever thus, you know, UKIP the last time around, 20 odd percent of the vote, specifically designed to not cooperate with the, with the Parliament, to not seek to represent their members, but instead to campaign to get out of it. And, and we're going to have that again this time, for good or for ill. I think that's just a statement of fact. 10.45 is the time. 40 school children a day are excluded daily in England. That's what a day means. Um, for drink and drugs offences, particularly drugs. It's a great investigation by Jason Farrell at Sky News, who we'll be talking to after 11. But I, uh, I, I apologise if you find it boring when I chronicle my slow descent into decrepitude. But some people have been listening to the programme for so long, they, they even knew me before I was a parent, a father. And I'm now getting old, and I'm so conscious of, of, of age. Two things have happened in the last 48 hours that have made me realise how old I'm getting. The first is... I'm still trying to come into work by tube every morning as a small nod to Greater Thunberg and her colleagues. It, it won't last indefinitely because I'm quite lazy and I don't like rain. But for now I'm doing it. And so instead of getting cross with John Humphreys for um, uh, conducting interviews in a, I, I think it probably is fair to say, rather impartial way on Radio 4 in the mornings, I'm now getting cross with school children with enormous backpacks on the tube. I've turned into that man who this morning very nearly told a young man with an enormous backpack on to take it off and put it between his feet. And the other thing that makes me realise I've become old is that we're going to talk about children being excluded from school for drugs offences after 11 o'clock. I was excluded from school for drugs offences, and I'm really embarrassed and ashamed. I spent years being secretly quite, well, not even secretly, I spent years being quite proud of it. And now I'm just embarrassed and ashamed. Is that progress? Oh, three, four, four. No, I'm only joking. I saw a little clip of Robert Smith being interviewed the other day, the lead singer of The Cure. And he was talking about the honours system, and, and it was another example of how old I'm getting. It was, it was, he made some really powerful points about how ridiculous it is to have um, gongs and medals in the gift of the royal family on the grounds, as he pointed out, that he's a lot more talented than any of them. I don't mind what you think about The Cure's music, but just, just think of somebody who is a lot more talented than them and then use them as a, as a litmus test of how ridiculous it is that the royal family get to, to dish out gongs and, and medals. But I, I, I've been reading a lot of Tudor history lately and this desperate desire for uh, office, for titles, um, it hasn't gone away at all. I kind of get it. I quite fancy being Lord O'Brien of, of, of Kidderminster. But then you read stories like this today and you wonder what it is about humankind that makes us so pathetic. The Queen has marked the eighth wedding anniversary of the Duchess of Cambridge by awarding her the most illustrious honour. Uh, she's been appointed a Dame Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, which means she can wear a blue sash and a badge featuring the Maltese Cross. Uh, imagine if there's a... Uh, there's a... Is it Turkmenistan? The president in Turkmenistan has just written a song about his horse. And one of the Roman emperors made his horse a senator, didn't he? I think it was Caligula. And you read this stuff in history... And you laugh at it when it's other countries or other eras. But for some reason, you don't laugh at it when it's your own country and your own era. Or, or most of us don't. This is the point about Robert Smith. He clearly does. It, just listen to this sentence. Don't go all royalist on me and get cross. I'm just reading words, all right? I haven't even expressed an opinion. Except that Robert Smith is more talented than Prince Andrew. But that's not really an opinion. That's like two plus two equals four. Um... It entitles her to wear a blue sash and a badge featuring the Maltese cross, surrounded by a blue ring and featuring a Tudor crown. It's 2019. It entitles her to wear a blue sash and a badge featuring the Maltese cross. I don't know why I've brought that to your attention, but I bet you're glad I did. Sarah's in Totteridge to steer us back to the Labour Party, the second referendum and, ooh, Jeremy Corbyn. What would you like to say, Sarah? Hello, James. Hello, um, I, I just wanted to say um, I voted Labour since I was eighteen. Yes. I'm not a Jer I'm not a Jeremy Corbyn fan. I am a Labour fan. Nice. I'm, I am now fifty two. My grand is ninety six. My entire family we always vote Labour because we're Labour fans. Um, if Jeremy Corbyn doesn't back a second referendum, I will not be voting Labour, and neither will 
would any of my entire family be voting Labour? In a general election? Yes, a general election in any type of election. I will not vote Labour. Here's the thing. 38% mm -hmm. of Britons, this is some polling that's come out today, 38% of Britons see Change UK as an anti-Brexit party, a party that in many ways only exists to oppose Brexit. Only 38% of Britons see it as such. 42% of us see Labour as an anti-Brexit party. So I think okay. he's banking on those numbers and, and on people like you and your grand being... Uh, we can afford, we can accommodate the loss of you. He's sort of saying, well, we're, we're trying to be all things to all people. We're going to carry on trying to be all things to all people. And... and Sarah and her nan can vote for whoever they want. We'll be all right. We'll get over the line. Because 42% of people think that we're an anti-Brexit party right now. Well, the problem is, is that it's not just me and my nan. No, I know it is. I'm being a little bit... It's me and my entire family. It's well, how many I, of us are there, though? It's all my friends. It's all of us. And contrary to belief, we all work. We all own our own homes. We, we all have several homes. Well, contrary to so, whose belief? You're, you're preaching to the choir well, on this one, Sarah. I, I, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> they seem to think that Labour voters were all unemployed. And all no, no that's, what, that's what, Even that's what there's the nothing wrong rich right-wingers say to have. poorer people in order to yeah. get poorer people to vote for their own harm and, and to, to further enrich the already rich politicians yeah. and press barons. So what will you do instead, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I would vote Labour. I would never vote Conservative. No. Um, so I don't really know who I would well, that, vote. Well, that's it, you see, because I think if you're not voting Conservative, he can afford to lose your vote, can't he, in a way? Because it, you, you just become negligible, I think, if my sophology is correct. Thank you, Sarah. Teach. How many... Um, um, does does, does anyone ever meet you for the first time without asking where Chong is? Uh, there's one person I think I've come across that's men not mentioned that. <laughs> and everyone always thinks I'm a dope head, even though I've never smoked dope before. <laughs> Carry on, Cheech. <laughs> yeah, have patience because uh, I've just flown overnight from Montreal uh, oh, wow. without any sleep. Um, I was a huge Corbyn fan. Mm. I had the T-shirt. I used to wear it to wind people up in Epsom, where I live. Uh, <laughs> I like you. I, I, I've had a, I've had um, the fortune. I have the fortune. I have the fortune to fly first class sometimes because of my wife. Yes. And I would wear the Corbyn T-shirt in the first class lounge just to wind up people. It's fantastic. In that area. You know what you have to do but, if, if anyone ever says, "I thought your lot wanted to abolish first class." You say back to them, "No, we want to abolish economy class." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on. But, they always say I'm a champagne show, a socialist, but I don't yeah. like champagne. Not but um, No, so the thing is, is that regarding Corbyn, I've been giving him the benefit of the doubt for like the last uh, year and a half or so, just thinking that if he came out against um, Brexit, if he came out for Remain, that would unite the Brexiters, unite the Conservative Party going, if you don't support us, then he is not backing the will of the people, even how ridiculous that sounds. But even I, like the, one of your previous callers mentioned, I had written to Labour and saying if, if, if Jeremy Corbyn doesn't back the, uh, the Remain or even a second, second referendum... Second referendum, yes. We will, we will end up leaving the Labour Party. And but this would, is the big I mean, gamble. To... This is you and Sarah, the previous caller, and, and I guess it's just a calculation or, or a gamble on how many of you there are. And even though you say that now, I'm not casting aspersions upon your, your, your sincerity or Sarah's, but when it comes to a choice between Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party and Boris Johnson's Conservatives, will you really be able to walk into the ballot box and, and not put an X in the Labour box? Well, uh, the, the answer to that is that I live in a fading grading um, area, which is the safest seat for um, the Conservatives, even as bad as he is. All right. He'll still get elected. All right. Well, so don't you, you're being too specific. I was speaking in broader terms than that. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, 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 so I, had, I had, for example, in the, in, the, yeah. in the European elections, my MEP is John Howard, and he, he is a really good MEP. He... Um, I don't know who else. I think I now have to get a list of everybody else that's standing in that constituency. So, so bear with me, because I want to slightly change my question, which is this. If it was a general election between Jeremy Corbyn's Labour and Boris Johnson's Conservatives, regardless of your personal vote, who would you want to win? Where's he gone? What happened then? Sorry, he's gone. Oh. Uh, Beth's in Litchfield. Beth, what would you like to say? Um, I just wanted to say that um, if Labour um, didn't back a second referendum, I would be extremely disappointed and I would actually vote for the Green Party. Um, I know a lot of people think the Green Party is a waste of a vote, but 
I believe, I mean, if you look 10 years ago, they didn't even have any seats, and now they've got one seat, and then... Yeah, no, I hear you. I think, I think that we, we, we're swimming against the tide of the rest of European politics, actually, because yeah. the way news works is that frightening people or... Or indulging racists is more newsworthy than than calm facts. We always go on about far right surges and this party's done this and yeah. these fascists have done that. But the Green Party across continental Europe is is really stretching Growing. its legs at the moment and could easily do so here. The numbers in the latest polling are very encouraging for the Greens. But come a general election and and and, and regardless of your specific constituency, which is a little mistake I made a moment ago with Cheech, if if by all means you, you could want to vote green, but if it looks like being either Jeremy Corbyn or Boris Johnson in Downing Street, if Jeremy Corbyn doesn't give you the second referendum that you want, and that general election comes around, you, you, you're going to want Jeremy Corbyn, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, there's absolutely no way I would vote for Boris Johnson. That's what he's I mean, banking on, I think. That's why he thinks yeah. he can get away with not giving you the second referendum that you want I, and deserve. Yeah, I think he... I, I can kind of see his point, because I think... I, I, I get where he's coming from because he's saying, you know, we need to be focusing on other things that are more important. You know, the fact that we've got a rise in food banks, a rise in mm. child poverty, you know, climate change is such it's not, a big it's not issue. Either, it's not either or. And all of these things no, will, get, will, no, will yeah. get worse under Brexit, especially the environmental stuff. It is, it is they argued. Yeah, they 100% will. But I think it'd be, if, we, if I had a choice between a Jeremy Corbyn Brexit and a Boris Johnson Brexit, then... I would choose a. I'd obviously choose a Jeremy Corbyn Brexit because I think he'd try and save those things that would be destroyed under Boris Johnson. I mean, he doesn't give a damn about climate change. He doesn't care about food banks. He doesn't care about child poverty. No, I, I, I hear you, and that's why, oddly, although you rang in to tell me you were going to go vote green, my my instincts are that an awful lot of people who will be very, very let down if there is no support for a confirmatory referendum later today from the National Executive Committee of the Labour Party, very, very, very let down, betrayed even. When push comes to shove and it's a two-horse race, you'll still back Corbyn's horse. A nice piece by Rachel Sylvester in The Times today. Brexit exposes Corbyn's double standards. Um, we're not having a bash Corbyn day to day, although I completely reserve the right to return to, to, to Corbyn bashing as and when the opportunity arises. We're simply highlighting what I think Caroline in Birmingham unwittingly distilled best. And she really likes Jeremy Corbyn because he's for the many, not the few. 75% of the Labour membership, or give or take, certainly a, a large majority of the Labour Party membership is in favour of a confirmatory referendum. And, and more, they would rather remain in the European Union. So he's for the many, for not the few, except when he's for the few, not the many. And I'm just wondering how proper loyalists, Corbynites, are going to square this circle. Uh, that he's let, you, sorry to say this, but he's going to let you down on the biggest issue of our lives. Hopefully, the biggest issue of our lives. The biggest political issue of our lives. He's going to let you down. Having come to power on a promise that everything he did would reflect what the membership wanted. And I, I don't get that. It just puts him on the same page as all the other politicians who say one thing and do the other and the one thing I learned when I was exploring my own scepticism in the early days of Corbyn's leadership was that you believed passionately and deeply that he would not be like all the others he wouldn't make promises and then break them spectacularly and publicly smash them to pieces upon the altar of self-advancement so I, I that's a little bit scary to me at least. And it, it speaks of two things. Either the um, incredibly influential advisor Seamus Milne is pulling all the strings, or Jeremy Corbyn himself rejects almost all of the expert analysis of, of what the economic impact of Brexit would be. Or, option three, he gets his customs union on the withdrawal agreement, so our trading arrangements <sighs> suffer minimal damage. I don't know enough to... to comment on that conclusively and he gets some bonus as yet unspecified from no longer being in the full European Union that would allow him to to do such things. What they are I know not but they shall be the terror of the earth as King Lear almost said. Darren's in Birmingham. Darren what would you like to say? Hi James. Hello, um, Darren hello. before you start can I ask you a person yeah. well not a personal question um I, I, do you think we should be more specific when we when we have callers from Birmingham? Because you know, I grew up down the road. It's the second city of our fine islands, and and we never say Darren's in London, do we? 
No, I think, uh, well, you could do, but... I think we're going to introduce a new rule. We're going to call it the Darren rule. So you, 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 you sir, are oh, about to become you. famous. Henceforth, can we specify a little bit more the location within... So whereabouts in Birmingham are you, Darren? I'm uh, out by the airport. No, that well, doesn't help. Me. That doesn't help. Yeah, I mean, where yeah, do you live? Marsden, Which bit do you live Marsden, in? Marsden Green. There we go. But D Darren's in Marsden Green, a lovely suburb of Birmingham. Darren, what would you like to say? Um, well, I'll, I'll lay my cards on the table first. I'm a Labour Party member, right. Corbyn, a, Cor a Corbyn fan. Um, yes. Both good. voted for him twice in the leadership election. Good, good, good. But on this issue, it really, it, it really is splitting me down the middle. Um, yeah. Part of my criticism of Brexiteers is that they tend to be one issue obsessives. <laughs> they want tend to be. They want, <laughs> <laughs> they want they want Brexit no matter what. And they know. can't tell you why either. Remember, that's quite so, an important part of the problem at the well, moment. Yeah, we, we know that. I'm also a Remainer, so that's the final card on the table. Well, then you're torn, right? Because your boy is not going to give torn. you what you want today. No, I, I would rather he would just come out and say no. I want. To, Either I want to leave or I want to stay. It seems to me to be too much in the middle. Well, we want to leave, but we want this. Yeah. And for the first time, I'm starting to believe that if we really do want a Labour government, the thing is, you've said it before, you love his policies. You, you know, you can't fault his policies, wanting a fairer society. But it just seems to me on this issue, it just... I just, I, do you know, I wish... He his mind depending... Yeah. He's to be changing his mind depending on how he thinks he can get himself into number 10 rather than what's best for the country, which is what he does on his policies. Yeah. And that's what baffles me. Yeah, well, me too. A few, a few people are pointing out that, that climate change and, and inequality are much bigger political issues than Brexit, but I'm talking about specifics of, of things that we would like to have a very specific vote on so until there is a referendum on climate change or inequality then then i will continue to explain that brexit is the biggest electoral issue that we're going to face for a generation I, what do you how do you process it then because i i'm not a big fan of corbyn as you know but as know you, you as you remind me very kindly I, I do find most of the broad brush strokes of the policies that he's in support of, are very attractive and, and necessary, actually, for a safer, more harmonious future. But I think Brexit will put a bonfire underneath half of them. And I don't, I don't know. I wish he would tell me, like you've just said, where he derives his faith from, that he's doing the right thing. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously a Eurosceptic. I mean, well, the, exactly. his, voting record, his voting record in Parliament proves that conclusively. But I just... And I he's really supposed to park I, that, isn't he, on the altar of for the many, not yeah. the few, on the altar of we don't believe in leaders, on the altar of the membership will set our course. And that's, I, I, you know, I almost wish I was like you, Darren, because, I, because I've been quite negative about Corbyn for quite a long time. You can easily file me under, oh, he's saying negative things about Corbyn again. But if I liked him and I believed him all along, how do you make sense of what he's doing now? It's the polar opposite of what he promised. We want to see a more social Europe, a more inclusive Europe, a Europe of workers' protection, a Europe of social protection. Those are the Labour demands. They can obviously only be achieved if you're within the European Union to do so. But your instinct is to battle to stay? My instinct is that because I want to see a Europe that does more for social protection, does do much more for environmental protection, and not simply a Europe of the free market. I wanted to see a more democratic Europe. I wanted to see policy making that was more open. I wanted to see greater similarity of protection laws and regulation on environmental protection issues like that all across Europe. Should Britain remain part of the European Union or not? That's going to be a decision. The Labour Party has made its position very, very clear on this issue. The vast majority of Labour supporters say the same. The affiliated trade unions in large measure say the same. The Labour Party is going to be committed to campaigning to stay within the European Union. And when there's a Labour government in 2020, we will be trying to ensure better workers' protection across Europe, strong financial protection all across Europe, and a Europe that's based on social justice and good rather than solely on free market economics. You've voted against the EU many times. Before today, you've branded some of its policies crazy and immoral. Would you now actually describe yourself as a pro-European? Yes, I've been critical of many 
um, things within the European Union. I think you would have probably gathered from my speech I have many criticisms of the European Union. This is a decision about whether we stay in and argue for the kind of socially just Europe that I want, that our party wants, that the vast majority of trade unions and ordinary people in this country want, or we walk away from it. That's the, that's the decision that's been made. Does it mean I recant on everything I've ever said or done? Absolutely not. I'm sorry about that. What has caused this conversion to the EU cause? You voted against membership of the Absolutely. EEC in 1975. Last year you said you couldn't rule out campaigning to leave the EU. Are you still a Eurosceptic? And if not, what's changed? Well, I did vote that way in 1975, kind of you to remind me. I remember it very well. I remember the debate and the, and the campaign about it. We've had a very big debate within the Labour Party and within the trade unions. Overwhelmingly, the Labour Party and trade unions have come to the view that they want to campaign for a social just, just Europe, to protect the workers' rights that we've got, to extend them and extend that degree of justice. That is the position we've reached. That's the position that has been adopted by the party. That's the party that I lead, and that's the position I'm putting forward. Well, it's an historic day. Britain voted in a referendum to leave the European Union. Parliament voted to trigger Article 50, and the Prime Minister has set out the start of that process today. And we had her statement this afternoon and my response to it. Historic day. Do you feel like it's a sad day? Well, it's a day that we've got to move on from because it's going to happen. We need to ensure that we protect jobs in this country. We need to make sure we've got a good an effective trading relationship with Europe in the future and we need above all immediately to bring certainty to British people living in Europe and European nationals that are living in Britain that uh, their future is secure because after all many thousands of them work in our National Health Service for example and help to keep us well. You want to be Prime Minister making the big calls. Do you honestly believe that Britain is better off outside of the EU? I want us to have a good relationship with the European Union. That's what uh, we have to have in order to maintain jobs in manufacturing, supply chains and food processing. That has to be the priority now. So we have that effective trading relationship, including a customs union with the European Union. I've been told I can only ask you one question, so I would very much like you to answer it. Do you honestly believe that Britain will be better off outside of the EU? We are negotiating a future for Britain in relationship to the EU which maintains that trading relationship. That's what we have to do. You would be the Prime Minister delivering Brexit. Do you in all honesty think that we would be better off outside of the, the EU than in it? The Prime Minister delivering Brexit, if it's us, will be ensuring that Brexit does not damage living standards but gives us opportunities to trade elsewhere also. The polar for opposite. First, for the first time my, my support is is wavering but then part of me my support's waving but then part of me thinks right, i don't want to become a single issue obsessive no that's and a good point because then you'd be as bad as them but you wouldn't be you wouldn't be a single I issue honestly, obsessive you'd be thinking I we should remain because i care about this and i care about that and i care about this and i care about that and i think brexit will damage all of it so you, you wouldn't be a single issue obsessive but i'm going to go on a limb and say regardless of what happens in the next six months if there's a general election anytime soon and it's Corbyn versus Rob or Johnson or Hunt he's got your vote well yeah I mean he, I mean, he knows that that's what he's banking yeah. on yeah and maybe I'm part of the problem I don't know no. No, you're not going to get any judgment from me, Darren, although I will always enjoy the rule of Darren when we take callers from Birmingham and um, insist upon a little bit more specific. Otherwise, we just become London-centric. We become part of the problem. We become part of the metropolitan liberal elite. Kate's in Islington, you see. We don't say Kate's in London, do we? Yeah. <laughs> Kate, what would you like to say? Um, I'm what you would call a cradle-to-grave. Labourite. Go on. Dad was a painter and decorator. Mum was a shop worker. Husband's a chauffeur. Uh. Kids have done a bit better. Got their masters and oh, done excellent. all right. Yes. But I should be voting Labour. I was a Labour member until March 2018. Right. I don't wow. think I'd ever, ever trust a Labour Party again. And, and that is down to Corbyn and it is down to Brexit. It feels wow. like being a part of a dictatorship and not a democratic party. Which is the it's, polar opposite of what we thought he what represented or what we well, were told he represented. The polar opposite of what he claimed. It is, isn't um, it? It is. We've got 75% of members. My own MP, Emily Thornbury, I spoke to her on your show, actually, oh, yeah. and she said to me, you know, the people voted Kate. Yeah. Well, her constituents didn't. 
just Jeremy no, but, Corbyn. And also, I, I find this I, this whole argument, and anyone who listens to this programme knows I'm like a stuck record. You have to tell me what you voted for. A word is not our future. Leave does not mean anything in the context of policy and detail and lived experience. You have to tell me what you voted for. And the minute you tell me what you voted for, I'll find someone else who voted to leave the European Union who voted for something completely different. So Absolutely. I, people and like I'm Emily Thornberry are being very disingenuous when they bang that drum. No, none of that makes any sense. No. But Jeremy Corbyn's jobs first Brexit, what does that even mean? God knows. It's Brexit the same as every, every other Brexit. All, all Brexits are the same. They're all... Because the Customs Union seems to me to be a, a way of telling people that we've respected their vote um, while actually turning us into the country that they were told we already were while being persuaded to vote to change. We'd be making ourselves worse. Absolutely. And just to finish, this yeah. is not just about Corbyn. My, my feeling about Labour isn't just about Corbyn. It's about every MP that claims to be Remain mm. that or, or claims to be... Um, against um, anti-Semitism or claims to mm. be all of these things. They're all over Twitter telling us this is terrible, that's terrible. When are they going to put their money where their mouth is? Absolutely. Uh, so I this hear you. isn't just about Corbyn for me. This is about our MPs. That has been a huge letdown. Well, I, I have some sympathy. For, I, yeah, it's not just on the Labour benches, but I have some sympathy for them because it's a you know it's an existential decision to leave the party or, and, and, and then you've got the impact it would have on their personal lives and even their, even their personal security, they're fine. But I, 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 I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to be nicer than usual, Kate. We yeah. elect them, and we elect them for the good of the country, not for the good of their careers, not for oh, the good know, of their know, party, know, 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 not for their good of anything else other than the country. And nobody can tell me that Brexit is good for this country. We are a social movement. I firmly believe leadership is about listening. Uh, uh, we will involve people in our debates on policy and then our party as a whole will decide. And as I remind you of that, Kate, a journalist tweets, um, the Daily Mirror's political editor, no less, Pippa Crera, tweets that she's hearing Tom Watson has just stormed out of the shadow cabinet meeting, still ongoing, after the EU manifesto document was displayed on a big screen rather than hard copies. It, he'll, get, he'll get one later because he's on the NEC, of course, but that appears to be a message to members of the shadow cabinet that the leadership doesn't trust them, or Tom just hates what he's seen on the screen. Yeah. Either way, terrible. Either way, Absolutely. terrible. I, 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 oh, dear. I've spoken to a few people. I thought that the, the um, Darren, as in the rule of Darren, was in many ways the most indicative because he, he just doesn't know what to do. Kate knows what she's going to do. She knows how she feels. People who insist they wouldn't vote Labour again, I don't know that I hold with that when it actually push comes to shove. Or you've got Caroline. A lot of calls from Birmingham today. Or you, you've got Caroline who... um essentially just trusts him, even though he's doing the opposite of what he said he'd do. I'm going to squeeze in one more, just by way of the rule of Darren getting his first airing on the programme. Because Bill's in Sutton Coalfield, a lovely suburb of Birmingham. Bill, what would you like to say? Morning, James. Hello, How Bill. are you? Very well, thank you. What's on your mind? Yeah, I, I was on my way to work and really had to stop the car and call in, which isn't what I normally do. Music to my ears, William. Yeah, Music yeah. to my ears. But um, I've just got so angry about the whole Corbyn business. I'm the Labour Party member, yeah. you know, and I just don't understand where the bloke's coming from. Nor do I. You know, uh, uh, the last time I voted Labour, hell my nose with Corbyn. It's yeah. better than we thought. The reason I'm very angry, really, is because I voted in two referendums. Yeah. The first one in 75, and I agree with Corbyn, or Ben at the time, actually. Fair enough. And that we should come out. Yeah. Because young man believed it's a big business. Sure. But now, here we are, 40, 45 years later. Yes. And the EU has delivered a kind of uh, working rights, uh, environmental standards, trading standards, um, safety of work practices that a Labour government, if they got them through, the Tories probably would have turned them over Cause, anyway. Because it's all about the baselines, isn't it? It's all about it the baselines, is. the things that they're not allowed to go below while we're members. Indeed, and, and the thing is, as I say, it's, it's, it's this sort of, it's sort of kind of like a racial purity that some of the... You know, the, the Corbyn seems to have... Ideological like the, purity, yeah, I agree. Yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. There was a, it was a poor choice of words. But, <laughs> you know, you just cannot see that, you know, it's his way. It has to be his way, or it's not And, that, right, and that's know? fine. There's plenty of politicians like that. They're called authoritarians. He promised yeah. he was the opposite. He promised yeah, you he was the polar opposite of that. 
Well, I just heard what you read out a couple of minutes ago yeah. before the, uh, the, the, the watch, of, you know, about the being for the members. And that's why I feel betrayed by it. Yeah. Absolutely, totally betrayed. And I won't vote uh, for <sighs> Labour in the, in the EU. I mean, well, I don't know. Say... I understand that. But come the general election, this is what they're banking on. And I think it's got the, it's got very much got the ring of truth to it, hasn't it? You're not going to do well, anything that might help Boris Johnson get into Downing Street, are not you? Not a hope in hell. Not a hope no. in hell of doing that, no. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm not totally disgusted with the way he's handled this. And, and, and as I say, I've been a member of the Labour Party two or three times over the years. And this is, and, this uh, is a real crunch time for you. I'll tell you what, Bill, if you had to hold your nose last time, you're going to need a clothes peg next time. I'm going to need a clothes peg and a cork as well, I think, you know, because it's going to be really, really difficult for me. I don't, don't want to go there. What do you need the cork for? Bill, thank you. Great stuff, and particularly pleasing for me as a son of Kidderminster to have so many calls from the West Midlands today. Hopefully that will, that will continue. It's just gone 11.17.